I will now talk about one way of representing this uh, data structure that captures this joint set. And the first representation is a simple representation using linked lists. Okay, so linked list representation of this joint set. Let's talk about a specific one set in the set of this joint set. Okay, so imagine that we are talking about set SI that has A, B, C, D in it. The way we are going to represent this is a linked list. The linked list is going to have the main object here, and it will have the main object will point to head and to the tail of the list of the list itself. So now, since the set has four elements, we are going to have four four additional objects in the list. The head is going to point to the first element. The tail is going to point to the last element here. Okay, so. The first element is A, then B, then C, then D. The first one in the list is always the representative of the set. So if this set is represented by A, then that's the element there. The last element in each object is going to be to the next element here. So the next of A is the object that has B. Next of B is the object that has C. Next of C is the object that has D. Next of D is nil, nothing. The first element here is going to point back to the main object of the list, okay? So this is it's going to point to the first one here. Okay? And So this is really a linked list representation of a set. Now imagine that I want to create a list, a new list with one element, so the operation make set. If you think about the operation make set with element x, all we are going to do is create that object for the list with the head and tail. We are going to create an element for x itself. The head is going to point here. The tail is going to point here. The same the same element because the list has one element in it. Then this pointer here of x will point to the main element or main object of the list. And the next is nil. So it's really just O of 1 operations to make a set. Okay. What about find? set if we want to find set and it's very important here to to pay attention to what i'm going to say here mix find set x i am giving you information i'm giving you a pointer to that element x in the set all i'm asking you is to find me the representative of the set to which x belongs so i'm not asking you to go find x in the list and then find the representative i am giving you the element x I'm giving you a pointer to that element x, and I'm saying find the representative. So imagine that this x I want to do find, for example, the element c. And so I gave you a pointer to c here. I said, this is the element that I'm giving you. Can you tell me what is the representative of the set to which c belongs? Well, it's very simple because now you can just follow this, this pointer from c. You can, point, you can follow it to the main object of the list. And from the main object, you follow the head pointer. It's going to take us to the first object. I look there. I find it's A. So I will say it is A. Okay. So the, the representative of the set to which C belongs is A. If you think about this, it's also O of 1 operations because we need to follow two pointers. For any element, you need to follow two pointers, really. Okay. Now, as you can imagine, the union will be the more costly one. So here I want to do union of two sets. And let's think about how, how union would work. So imagine that we have, we have uh, these two sets here. And I'm not, now I will basically draw them like this. And so the first one corresponds to three elements. And the second one here has as a set that corresponds to five elements, let's say. Okay, so of course we have these pointers, but I don't need to draw them in every case. Okay, so suppose I want to take the union of these two sets here, or the un I want to take the union of the two sets, and the result should be a linked list that corresponds to the to the union of these two sets. So if you think about it, the the main the main operations I need to do are the following. Well, since I will take the union, we will create one list. So we don't need these two objects for the, the, main, uh, the, the two main objects for the list. So I need to get rid of this one. Okay, so we need to get rid of this one. This is one operation here. The second thing I need to do is that the next of the last one, 
from the first list is now the first element in the second list. This is another, another operation here. The tail of the first list is no longer the tail that, that originally was there. No, now the tail is the tail of the second list. Okay, so this is a third operation here that we need to do. And it's very easy to find it because the tail would actually go to the tail of the main object of the second list. So third operation. So these are the, the easy ones or the, 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 the operations that are not time consuming. But what is time consuming is that we have these back pointers from every element in the list that need to point back to the main object. So now I need to update this back pointer to go all the way to this object here. Okay. And we need to update this. I need to update this. We need to update this. We need to update this here. Okay, so if you think about it now, we need to do five operations to update all these ones. Now, if we think about it, if you think about the three applications I illustrated, which is the equivalence classes, the connected components, and the, and, uh, the minimum spanning tree, if you think about it, the way the algorithm worked is first we started, started individual sets, each of which has one element in it. Okay, so we started n sets. This is where we called make set. Okay, and there are n, n sets there, each of which has one element. And then after that, we, in the worst case, we could call n minus one union operations. Okay, now the n minus one union operation combined, how long do they take? Combined, how long do they take? Well, imagine that first I have I have a list with one element. I want to do a union with a list of another another list with one element. So if I want to do this, it's okay. I need to update this element here. But the result is now a list with two elements, right? So this is the union. Suppose now, so suppose this 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 now correspond to x one and x two. This was x one here and x two. And suppose now I want to take the union with a list that corresponds to x3. Okay, so now I need to update this one and this two here. And the result now will be x1, x2, x3. And suppose I want to do the union with x4. Now I need to update three of them here, right? So now we need to do one, one update here, two updates here, three updates here. After some point, again, in the worst case, I'm drawing a worst case scenario here. We might have this situation where we have x1, x2, all the way to xn minus 1. And here we have this list with one element, xn. We need to update 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. So this is n minus 1 updates here. So the total number of updates we need to make is this, the sum of these numbers, one plus two plus three plus all the way to n minus one. And this shows us that n union operations, or in this case, it's n minus one really, it's n minus one union operations, takes theta of n squared. Now, Notice how I'm analyzing the running time here. I'm not focusing on one union operation because the algorithms that are working on these disjoint sets are always doing a sequence of these operations of creating you know, singleton sets with one element and then a sequence of union on them and so on. So I am analyzing the total running time that n operations in this case or n minus one operations would take. This is what we usually talk about, what we refer to as amortized analysis, okay? Amortized analysis. Because now I can take that theta of n squared, I said, on average, how much does every operation take? I said, okay, if n of them is taken n squared, then each of them on average is taking n time, okay? And this is the type of analysis we do when we work with this type of data structures where we are talking about these disjoint sets, and almost all algorithms that are making use of them always consist of a sequence of such operations. We want to know on average or the total running time of, this, of these operations. So now the, the, the total running time of n minus 1 union operations in this worst case scenario took n squared. Can we improve this? 
The answer is yes, we can improve it. If you look at this, if you pay attention to what I just drew here, let's look at this, the last one, for example. So I chose to do the union of the list on the left has one element, the list on the right has n minus one elements, and I ended up updating n minus one pointers. But the union is, of course, commutative. I could have done this. So this is x1 to xn minus 1. I could do the union such that the shorter of the two lists is on the right. If I do this, the only, op the only update I need is just one, only one operation here, right? So this simple modification is basically saying when you are doing the union and you are, have the list that correspond to two sets, and imagine that we are always updating the pointers for the list on the right, when you are doing the union, always update the pointers to the shorter of, uh, always update the pointers of the elements in the shorter of the two lists. So if you are taking the union of two lists, one has 100 elements, one has 50, you update the pointers on the list that has 50 elements. How do we know that? We can add very simple modification. We can add just one number to the main object of the list that says how many elements are in that list. So when you ask me to do union of two lists, I look at how many numbers are in them, how many elements are in them, and I always update the, the pointers of the shorter of the two lists. Now, does this trick really result in shorter amount of time? And even asymptotically, the answer is yes. So if we think about it asymptotically, let's actually look again at n minus one, n minus one union operations, where we started with these in singletons, sets of, of, of single items in them, and I want to do the union. Okay, so if I want to do the union, the first thing I would do, and I will always draw the, the longer of the two lists on the left and the shorter on the right. So first thing, imagine that I have two lists that I want to take their union. Okay, and let's focus on one element, x here. If I want to take the union here, I need to update x. So this will be the pointer of x is going to be updated. This is one operation. Now, I created a list that has two elements in it. The list has two elements in it, and x is one of them. And I'm doing union here with some other list. And I will say that the pointer to x is going to be, is going to be updated. If the pointer from x is updated, then the length of the list on the left must be at least as long as the one on the right, right? So if the one on the right has two elements in it, again, I'm focusing on the circles here, the one on the list has to have at least two elements because if it had fewer than two elements, then I will not be doing the union like this. I will be, do, I will be swapping the order of, do, of these two sets. So this now x, I will update the, the pointer to x to the left, but no, what would happen once I take the union of these two? The one on the right has two elements, the one on the left has at least two elements. So now I created a list with at least four elements in it that has x here. And if I want to do a union and the pointer from x will be updated, then the list on the left has to have at least four elements in it as well. At least four. It could be more. Okay. Now, once I'm done with this, I will create a list that has eight elements in it. So look what happened here. The result from here was a set that has two elements. The result from this was a set that has four elements. From here, it's eight. And if you think about it, after log n operations, you are going to get to a, and at most after log n operations, you are going to get to a list that corresponds to n, to n uh, elements in the set. Okay. So what this analysis is telling me that the pointer, this the back pointer from x to the main element or main object of the list will be updated at most at most log n times. Okay? So a back pointer under this simple modification to the algorithm where we always update the pointers in the shorter of the two lists, the back pointer of an of an individual element in a list will be updated at most log n. In the worst case, we need to update the, the back pointers for in the worst case to something on the order of n elements, right? So if I'm 
if I'm taking the union of two of two lists, for example, one is n over two elements, one n over two, I need to be doing the update for n over two elements. So if for every element we do at most log n updates, and there is there are in the worst case n elements whose back pointer I need to update, then n union operations n union operations will at most do n log n back pointer updates okay so in the previous implementation where we are just saying you know take the union whatever order don't worry about the length of the list we had n squared time now if i am do just this simple modification by always updating the pointers from the in the shorter of the two lists that takes me to order of n log n time okay so a uh, linked list, just to, to recap here, a linked list uh, representation allows me to find, uh, to find set and to create set with one element in O of one operation. And if I do this trick of always updating the back pointer of elements in the shorter of the two lists, then I can do the union in O of n log n for, about, for n union operations.